Not all hours in the day are equal. So we do ourselves a disservice by trying to convince ourselves that we can be 100% productive and focused during all hours of the day. I'm Dr. Sahar Youssef. I'm a cognitive neuroscientist and a professor at UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business. I also run the Becoming Superhuman Lab. We teach people how to rethink the importance of being busy so they can get more of their most important work done in less time with less stress. Today, we'll be talking about why we should be taking our brain's biology into account when scheduling our day and the role our genes play in deciding when we're most prepared to do certain tasks best. Many of us have a tendency to think that we have the capacity to be 100% productive or focused every hour that we're at work. But a look at our body's biology reveals that is not the case. In 2017, the Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to scientists Jeffrey Hall, Michael Rosebash, and Michael Young for their work discovering chronotypes. These are the biologically dictated circadian rhythms in our bodies that determine the peaks and dips in energy we experience throughout the day. Your chronotype is your ideal rhythm, and it's best known for dictating when you should sleep, but it's also responsible for when you're the most focused and when you're the most creative. Because your chronotype is embedded in your DNA, there's not much you can do to change it, and you shouldn't try to. Scientists have also discovered that working against your internal clock can strain your physical and mental health, as well as sink your productivity. Because our chronotypes are determined by our genes, they're a bit different for everybody, but most of the population falls into three main categories. About 20 to 25% are what's called AM shifted, meaning that their biological prime time is in the early morning. These are the people who go to bed early, wake up early, and are ready to focus first thing in the AM. Another 20% of the population is PM shifted, meaning that they're most productive later in the day. While AM shifted and PM shifted folks, sometimes called early birds or night owls, tend to dominate the conversation, the majority of the population is actually what's called biphasic, meaning they have a peak of energy in the mid-morning, as well as a second peak again in the early evening. Biphasics also have a big energy dip somewhere in the afternoon. So when you hear people talk about the afternoon slump, it's totally normal and biological. Since your cognitive capacity varies so much over the course of the day, it really pays off to know when your brain is primed to do certain activities so you can design your day accordingly. But to get started, you'll need to figure out your chronotype. The most accurate way to find out your chronotype is to take a genetic test, but there's also a number of research-backed questionnaires that can pretty accurately predict which type you are. You can also experiment on your own by simply checking in with yourself and logging your energy levels from when you wake up till when you go to bed for at least three days. Once you've figured out your personal chronotype, you can get more out of your day by designing your schedule to work with your body's biology instead of against it. First, you'll want to schedule your analytical work during your peak focus hours. This means anything that requires deep focus or attention. For most people, this is a three to four hour chunk that starts in the early or mid morning. Studies have shown that if you do one hour of work during your peak focus hours, you can be up to five times more productive because you're more alert and way less likely to make mistakes. If your work gives you some level of flexibility and you wanna get your most important work done faster every day, think about which of your to-dos require dedicated focus and prioritize scheduling this work during your peak focus hours. Second, save your less important work for the dip, which happens in the afternoon for most people. These are activities like emails or administrative tasks that don't require deep focus. The dip can also be a great time to take a refreshing break by getting some sunlight or taking a walk. Finally, after the dip, you'll have a recovery period, which for most of us happens in the late afternoon. This is the perfect time to do tasks that require insight or creativity, like brainstorming or problem solving. Remember, these times will be a bit different for everybody. So if you can, it's best to try experimenting with scheduling specific times for specific tasks to see what works best for you. 
Just keep in mind, the general rule of thumb is to do your analytical work during your peak, your administrative work during your dip, and your creative work during your recovery. I'm Dr. Sahar Youssef. Thank you very much for watching.